I want to start this video off by apologizing for not uploading sooner. I've been working a couple days on a video about comic books versus anime, and it's taking longer than I thought. So, let's go for some low-hanging fruit! Yo, can I say fruit? It's the way I say fruit. If I say it with too much inflection, it could be seen as derogatory. How do we get here, you might ask? Or, why bring back G4? Well, here's a timeline of events that lead up to this sh show we're currently in. In 2013, NBC Universal pulled the plug on G4 because, let's face it, it wasn't burning up the world then, and it sure as hell not burning up the world right now. Comcast Spectacor bought the rights to G4, the discarded husk that it is, and decided to bring it back from the dead, which was on November 16th of 2021. G4 also has a partnership with Twitch, which explains why Twitch views are so much huger than their views are on YouTube. And if there's one thing Twitch is known for besides thoughts, it's nepotism. All right, now check this part out. Comcast and Spectator Gaming, or whatever the hell it's called, these entities own League of Legends T1 and the Overwatch League's Philadelphia Fusion. Comcast now owns G4 and it's dusting off the crappy brand. The guy in charge of it is Tucker Roberts. It's worth noting that Tucker here has been in a romantic relationship with Attack of the Show's own Olivia Munn between 2018 and late 2019, leading almost up to 2020. Think of that right there. I'm pretty sure she had to have been in this dude's ear the whole time when the decision was made to buy G4 and bring it back. And good God, it's a trash pile. Because who else would have fond memories of G4? It's certainly not Adam Sessler, and he's nowhere near Tucker's dick. The announcement was made on July 24th of 2020. But these kind of deals take years to come to flourishing long before the public is made aware of them. Then, Olivia Munn and Tucky break up near the end of 2019, so we're kissing 2020. She goes off, gives some tweet to somebody, ends up stealing John Mulaney from his wife. Drag her, slay her, sipping on that true tea, hunty. <sighs> Gag. They have a kid, and it was literally on the Twitter timeline the same time as the G4 rant, so it's kind of funny. You're like looking up Olivia Munn, and she's holding a baby happy. <laughs> oh, and then John Mulaney's ex-wife started complaining about how she was blindsided by it, but that's a whole other bit of drama and beef. And this isn't the Spill the Tea channel. Anyway, if I was him, I would have pulled the plug on this whole project the second she walked out the door. But I guess money was already invested. And it's obvious from G4 Esports' YouTube channel that they're hoping they can get some sort of return from this. Since Comcast owns two esports teams and is building a $50 million esports arena that's been held up by COVID. Having TV based for gamers could be great for marketing as a tool. If it all takes off. But so far, it's not really happening right now. So this is probably losing money. They also put money on a studio in Burbank, California. 67 square feet facility featuring workspace environments for broadcasting production facilities as well as esports training and gaming spaces. Whoopee! Oh, by the way, this is the same studio that was used by news heavy hitters like TMZ and Inside Edition. You can smell the mediocrity in the air. Shamit Design and Construction is basically behind the facility's design itself citing that the new studio looks to embrace G4's brand through its look. As much as the studio has been detailed with custom art designs, some of which are now available as NFTs for the fans to buy. Why don't you die? G4 NFTs, that's what the Zoomers want. Conclusions. It looks like G4 TV is being used as the mouthpiece of an esports company which was relaunched shortly after Olivia Munn broke up with the son of the Comcast CEO and partner of Spectacor, Tucker Roberts. Tucky's almost like a rapper trying to buy street cred by paying all the OGs to go out and show for him. They are invested in the Overwatch League as well. So that's why we're here. Frankly, in all honesty, I don't know who this is for. Most people who remember G4 are all old and Zoomers don't give half a rat's ass. G4 Television. You might have remembered it from the old days. It's golden age, if you will. 
Others would argue with you that basically the best time of X-Play and many other shows that spawn from G4 were originally found on Tech TV. Finding original Tech TV clips is a little too hard in this day and age because that's going way back. Over 12, 15 years. And unfortunately, I'm not a social justice warrior with an axe to grind. I don't have time to look for that. Nostalgia has a habit of making us remember things more fondly than they were. But in this case, I hate to say it. The classic G4 was better. No, 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 you can't be Kevin. I'm pretty sure I am. No, you can't be Kevin Pereira because that's Kevin Pereira. I'm Kevin Pereira. Okay, yes, ha ha ha, great bit, great bit everyone. But really, we gotta move it on. Thank you, that was very funny guys. No, flashback. <laughs> Again. End of flashback. What we have now is pretty much what you expect from any reboot in this day and age. Everything that made the shows interesting or worth watching for the average viewer are gone. We have the new G4. It's friendlier. It's different. It's whacker than ever. Hello! I am a piece of ham that has transcended space and time to tell you that G4's tasty shows like X-Play, Attack of the Show, Invitation to Party, Boosted, and others will upload and or stream their raw and dangerous content on Twitch and YouTube. These can also be found on cable. Now here is Frost and Avali for the eSports update. I'm not gonna speak. Bam, 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 no, wait for it. Bam, 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 bam. Anytime I speak, it's almost ha- Bam, 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 bam. Hello and welcome to- <laughs> <laughs> Every time! <laughs> no, go ahead, roll it again. <laughs> no, they're not gonna do it, Frost. They're not gonna- <laughs> You are a thief of joy. Anybody else? I never thought I'd see a day when I'd miss Olivia Munn, but here it is. And that's how I know I'm in the darkest timeline. At this point, G4 television is propped up on the shoulders of Adam Sessler, and that's not even that great to begin with. Much like the reboot of Star Wars, Adam Sessler is here as our new version of Luke Skywalker, and the irony is he embodies everything that was the Disney Luke Skywalker. Except there won't be a redemption at the very end for him. It'll just be Sessler fading off into the Twitterverse, screaming about bigotry, homophobia, and whatever other buzzword he can cling together on his boring Twitter feed. Many people have fond memories of Adam Sessler, and that's probably because they didn't follow Adam Sessler on Twitter for years after G4 ended. Adam Sessler is pretty toxic. I mean, he's really into that sort of hyper-progressive, left-leaning narrative. And for years, that was pretty much his Twitter account. And if anyone made the mistake of daring to go to Adam Sessler and say something like, Hey, Adam, could you talk about video games? He would then shame you like you were a dog, block you, and then I quote, now let's talk about video games. <laughs> Honest to God, I don't understand why there's so much nostalgia for this man when he's done everything possible to show his disdain for the current gaming industry, or I should say the current gaming community. Hell, the gaming community of the past. Nothing personal, I'm speaking from experience of following Adam Sessler for a few years on Twitter because I was a fan of him on G4. And now I look at the man and I go, I don't care what the f*** he has to say. The dude's toxic. He'll spit in your face in a heartbeat if he thinks you're some sort of bad gamer or person by the barometer that is set by the progressive notion of what's good and bad. But anyway, let's go on because we're not going to make this. Oh, yeah, let's go one more, actually. If you've seen G4, it's sucking right now. The YouTube channel isn't doing that great. Attack of the Show's YouTube channel isn't doing that great. Everything involved with this is literally just hanging off of Adam Sessler's nuts. It sucks ass. It's empty. It's devoid. It's like grasping frantically, trying to hold on to some nostalgia to get you to stick around and to make you think it's interesting when it's not. The fact that there's this many people working on this channel and the production value makes you feel like you still don't care is damning. Next play. Whoa! G4, even though I live in an old time a ghost town. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> okay, all right, Ham. 
You can follow us on all these fine platforms and more, and then see what happens behind the scenes. And... I'm gonna eat this ham. Okay, all right, great. Hey, we actually really hope to see you online, and, and we hope you enjoyed the shows. We really are. Awesome. I'm awesome. That's a sentient ham. You probably should eat it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Hope, hope to see you on the internet. Kill me, please. I want to die. Here's a funny clip of Adam Sessler a few years back with uh, Jim Sterling when he was still a man. No, 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 you cannot joke about that. You got me. And they're talking about free speech and hate speech and whatnot. Now, here's the funny thing in today's definition of hate speech, it's literally whatever they deem hate speech to be. So if you ask a question like, how can you be non-binary and trans? What are you transitioning into if you have no gender? That's considered hate speech now. Simple question. Mm. Hate speech and online gaming. Ooh. The saucy topic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Would be a nice start. Um, yeah, really. It's, I don't know. I'm assuming no one would attest to being one of those guys who are in this room right now, uh, but there seem to be a lot of them. Uh, maybe a lot of them are in junior high school. I don't know. If you know someone who does this, could you stop playing with them? Could you call them a douche? Uh, I mean, it, it really does ruin the experience. When I hear, you know, clearly a young person using racial epithets or derogatory terms for, for, for homosexuals, it's just... It, it just makes my stomach churn. And th the idea that we are supposed to be a culture of people who at one point, if not now, felt already on the margins of a greater society, and then you just see this behavior that just replicates the same thing with a different target, it really kind of makes the whole affair seem a little bit deflated and defeated. Uh, it, it really, and, and it don't even give me that First Amendment nonsense. You have every right to say it, and I have every right to call you a f***ing <laughs> and try to find your address yes. and put it out there! Now, in this clip, he does talk about hate speech in the sense of people using racial slurs and whatnot. But he said, kids. So, what are you gonna do? You're gonna dox an edgy teenager? Then what? Hope somebody else takes his information and, I don't know, gets him swatted? Like, where's the end game here? And if it's an adult being an idiot, he said something you didn't like that was unsavory. What's the next move? You dox them and hope people call them and get them fired from their job and maybe they become homeless and then they'll think twice about saying something I don't like. Or maybe it would be racist. Frankly, whatever happened to people just getting over things. I remember going to DSP's chat uh, one time to me back when he was on Twitch. Fluffy does that for attention. And you know what happened in DSP's chat? They started using racial slurs against me. <laughs> like DSP's chat was full of racial little I didn't go on Twitter and immediately start tweeting at Twitch and Darkside Phil and then showing clips of his chat saying racist things towards me. I got over it, whatever. Wow, people in his chat said something racist about me. Who cares? They're in DSP's chat watching Phil. I think there's nothing I can do to them that life hasn't done. But that's me. Daddy cool! Okay, let's play some toys, Fluffy. Oh, my point is, Sessler being for doxing while Jim Sterling nods and go yes in the back. It's, it's kind of an odd take for me. Especially when we see how doxing people goes. It's not cool. G4, ever since it came back, has had a disdain for gamers, in my personal opinion. Remember when G4 put out that tweet? <laughs> God, I hate the new G4. And it was like, whenever someone tells me gamers are toxic, he's out of line, but he's right. And then G4 immediately deleted the tweet because, uh, you know, it's stupid. You know, like, it'd be like having a burger joint. And then when someone comes into the burger joint, you call them a stupid fat ass. You know, like, oh, you're having the triple cheeseburger with double bacon and 45,000 fries. And then you order a Diet Coke like it's going to offset it, you fat pig. That would be seen as toxic towards your customer base. Do you see my point here? That's exactly what they do. Adam Sessler has no bones about saying that gamers are 
horrible human beings right now. Crypto beefcakes. Remember that when G4 was shilling those? Crypto beefcake. beefcake. Crypto beefcake. <laughs> Which makes me think they must not be making money off of this. But maybe later we'll get to talk about crypto beefcakes which is a project that you tie an NFT to a Discord account, and then if you're a positive influence in a community, it actually inflates the value of your NFT. So heaven forbid we have avatars and communities that encourage people to be kind and supportive to increase the value of something. But apparently, that's the thing that gets me canceled today, is caring about a new technology and community. Well, you're all welcome. That's my time on this one. You ever see a look of distress on a man's face? You can just tell that at one time, Attack of the Show was fun for him. You're hanging out with cute chicks. It's all and giggles. This is your job. You're having a good time. Now it's 2020. You were on a bastardized version of your old show. People aren't really watching it on YouTube. You probably get paid less. And they come in and they're like, Kevin, you got to sell some beefcakes. And you're like, what the are beefcakes? They're the new NFT that sponsored the show. Thought we were making money. Just sell the beefcakes, Kevin. And then chat turns on you like a den of vipers. Because let's face it, nobody wants to be shilled NFTs from Attack of the Show. They're here for their little bit of nostalgia to remind them when they were young and carefree. Now they're middle-aged and miserable. As everything's supposed to be builded back better, but it's actually worse than ever before. And now Kevin Pereira is chilling at FTs. This isn't what I want. I want Olivia Munn in a pie. Yeah, that's okay to hate. I'm going to sleep fine tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I really will. Now, uh, at the end of our stream in the cool down, uh, I'm probably not going to talk about NFTs anymore because someone's going to come out with a cattle prod. <laughs> Heaven forbid that happened. <laughs> Poor Kevin. <laughs> Oh, that's the laugh of a desperate man. That's the laugh I have when I look at some of this crap I have to make a video on. I just laugh maniacally while I die inside. Now that I've made it clear that G4 already has disdain for its user base, which makes no sense of even doing this show if you don't really like the gaming community, it is what it is. Last night, this sexually dubious member of G4 named Fork, I believe, had a mini rant on sexism in gaming. Originally, she was going on about how Red Dead Redemption 2 has zero support from Rockstar Games, and she isn't wrong there. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a good game that Rockstar is doing all with. But whatever, that's a whole different story. Rockstar whores out GTA 5 Online's shark cards like selling digital crack to kids, all the while Strauss Zelnick buys the blood of teenagers to inject it inside of his buttocks, in hopes to reduce the aging process while paying to Cthulhu or Pan the Goat God. But that's neither here nor there. I'll save my conspiracy theories for later. Fork went off about those misogynists with gusto. On the surface, which is all anyone is going to take this for, she came off as stunning and brave. The medium is full of bigots and misogynists. The second most popular misnomer for women next to the gender pay gap. And if you agree with me, I have a news flash for you. <laughs> You're problematic and you deserve to have your feet beaten. I decided to look deeper into this, like any good investigative journalist who's high on cookies and low on self-awareness. I checked the live stream for those pesky sexist remarks from incels and whatever other buzzword I can't think of right now. But I didn't find them. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. At first glance, maybe I needed to watch the chat for the full hour and 30 minutes before this rant takes place to find the stuff that people are supposedly saying. But I can tell you from experience, while live streaming, you tend to fixate on the comments that are negative more so than the people that are praising you. And let me tell you, children, chat was praising the living hell out of Fork. You would have thought she was leading some sort of rally for real change. In all honesty, you would have thought Fork cured cancer. She walked on water and also raised Betty White from the dead like Jesus Christ before her with Lazarus. Sexism in gaming. In joining G4, yes! 
in, this is not where I thought we were going, I know, but I'm here. I have no here. idea. I'm listening. Yeah. In joining G4, I was ecstatic to be part of something that I grew up watching as a child. But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. It's somehow- Talk to him, Frost! It has somehow been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That's it's weird. not a compliment. It's weird. I missed that message entirely, which I'm sure was bait. Nothing personal, but the idea of jerking off to Peter Pan isn't sexually appetizing to me. But different strokes for different folks. It's dehumanizing and it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Hey. Get in, loser. We're talking League of Legends ass. Oh, oh my. Oh, come, come on. Really? I don't know what G4 she was watching, but the sole purpose of Olivia Munn was literally to get young guys to tune in. Play that delicious footage, Stu. Do in on the count of 77. Olivia Munn did not count exist with me. to be nice on the count with me. Here we go. Here we go. In 77. 76. Here, I'll just hold here. I you would can put your hand on my hands. I would apply at a place somewhere like that. Yeah, you like can put exactly your hand on my hands. There, like okay. there. Yeah. I would be <laughs> applying some serious pressure to create a, a pressure zone. Check out these really cool anime pillows that they have here. They're really big in Japan. Uh, they're only 40 bucks a piece, and they're cute and cuddly, and you can sleep with them. <laughs> for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be oh. nice on the eyes for you. Suck it up. Yeah, that's life, lady. Yeah, welcome to show business. Hey, she cooking, y'all. And that's just <laughs> obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Now, here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many games for one person to shoulder the burden. So we divide and conquer. And when we use language like we or I, that's the reviewer. That's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. You. And that's not to say that Gerard, TBH, Adam, or myself. That's the face of a man who knows that this is the beginning of the end. This is the downfall of G4 for a second time. Elf, don't contribute to the reviews. We absolutely do. But it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us. That's why we're X play and not Adam play. We have done <laughs> the experiment and control. Whoa, ho, ho, look out, it's Adam Sessler. Everybody, the nutless wonder. This rant has the same energy and sanctimonious cringe that Greg Miller had at E3, telling Twitch chat to moderate themselves and that the people who were, were bad or something like, it was the gayest thing ever, honest to God. The gaming community needs to be better about building the community it's in. Yes. And I can't agree with that enough. If you know anything about Greg Miller and Kind of Funny, being better is a big part of what we always He's talk about. Be better to each other and don't be a jerk. And I know right now on our very own Twitch page right here, a bunch of people are being jerks. And everybody who's a good person, which is the majority of gamers, need to step up, ladies and gentlemen, and of course show that the positive outshines the negative. That's my rant. Goodbye on that Thank one. you. What, you gay? You could tell Greg Miller's never been in a fight and he's shaped his whole life. And these are the type of people that are put into these hosting things. They can't take any level of criticism. They can't take any level of trolling. And they're just boring, boring, boring individuals. It's like you're looking at a person that is living yawn. And what I mean by that is they're literally the living embodiment of a yawn. How can I describe Greg Miller in a sound? <sighs> I'm getting the same energy here with Fork. She probably got a bunch of tattoos to make herself seem more interesting. But right now, blank slate NPC. And I'm probably going too hard again. World for the variables. 
Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. God has f me in the ass so many times. It is gone. And yeah, it also happens to Gerard and TBH, but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does. Both things can be true, that there is a general hatred of any change that isn't Adam, and that all receive special flame just for being a woman. And if you dig deeper, you'll find Twitter comments that shed more light on this rant, making it clear there was more than just, oh, sexist in gaming that blue check marks tend to repeat like parrots in the Galapagos Islands. As Scroll the Almighty, you guys are under the wrong impression here. Most of the people flaming have legitimate reasons, whether you like it or not. The ones being sexist and saying whatever hurtful things, this was supposed to deter them, either ignore it or be consumed by it. It's the internet. He does have a point. But also, I couldn't find the sexist comments during the stream. Maybe they dual live streamed, but there's no proof of it on the YouTube channel, which leads me to be unable to confirm or fully deny this. Ace comes in and goes, oh, a kid burn a cross in your line, just ignore it to be consumed, which is a big, big leap. There's a huge difference between someone going, Olivia Munn was hotter and her feet were delicious versus somebody burning a cross on your lawn. But this is the sort of jump progressives make immediately to Nazis because there's no rebuttal. It's like, wait, you don't agree? You're a bigot! That's how it works. This guy, Phil, goes, never seen the show, never read comments about it, but I'm extremely surprised she gets ne so much negative feedback. We'll figure out why that happens later, but too long didn't watch. Basically, it's because people wanted Morgan Webb, and I think this chick just replaced her for X-Play, and Morgan Webb didn't even show up in the first place. So that's most likely what led to all of this backlash. That's pretty much what it boils down to at the heart of it, but there's more to it. This J guy comes back and goes, I guess you're a casual viewer. She was constantly hated on League of Legends due to being region biased and constantly providing bad takes and misinformation. Pushed as facts. There was a reason she was removed from League of Legends community. Someone else comes in and immediately uses misogyny. See, this person, that's all they got. Oh, League of Legends has a track record for being misogynist. That's your rebuttal. This guy gives you a clear explanation of what most likely went down and your reply is, they were misogynist. This is not how you win arguments. This is how you make people like me side with the other side. It's like, here's why we have economic disparity. Oh, this guy has an explanation for what's going on. Then someone with blue hair pops up and goes, wow, you're a bigot. I work with my heroes. Good work, Adam Sessler. Noob Tonic then says this. All the conversations I see revolving around her on my feed over her misinformation when discussing PlayStation exclusives, calling Hogwarts Legacy a game first shown on PlayStation, even an Xbox exclusive. Yes and no. It all started from fake information she was spreading in the other video, and none of her co-hosts corrected her. So you have the usual two groups coming out. People who called her out for fake information and trolls. She hasn't addressed the fake information. So now we have a bit more of an idea of what the hell was going on here. This is really the real heart of the issue. She got on one of these X-Play videos, said some stupid stuff about consoles. Is it really stupid? It's her opinion, but you know, people's opinions can be stupid. And basically that led to the console fanboys losing their minds. And that's when they came into one of the chats and started talking about how they didn't like her, she didn't know what she was talking about, etc. And then she took that and spun it into sexism just for being a woman. And I wish I could turn the camera around so that you could see the incredible team that make X-Play. Half of our producers and writers are women. What is your name again? Barbara? Obara. Obara. You look like an angry little boy. Don't presume to tell me what I need. Which was the move to make, technically, in a, a power move. <laughs> because now everybody's acting like she just did something heroic when in all actuality, the real issue here was people think she's not qualified for the job and they miss Morgan Webb and Olivia Munn and she spun it into sexism. Let's watch the video, children, if you care to. She's wild. She's <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like hyped up. 
Okay, yeah, Starfield's great. Obsidian, amazing. I actually think Xbox is gonna have a hell of a 2022. I think they're gonna absolutely smoke Sony, uh, Sony until Sony get their act together right now. I think the um, PlayStation is uh, kind of dead man walking. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, what? Okay, so I can see where people got upset with her, especially console fanboys. She said Sony's dead man walking. How? On what planet is Sony dead man walking? Starfield, we don't even know if it's going to be good. I hate to even be like this because I don't like talking about games anymore. But for real, Starfield from Bethesda, not holding my breath. Nothing personal. But as someone who's played a lot of Bethesda games, the quality has dipped substantially. And if they're using that busted ass creation engine again, God help us all. Elder Scrolls? She brings it up later, but let's be real. Elder Scrolls, we don't know when that's happening. You don't know. It's sure as hell not happening in 2022. It's going to take at least another two or three years to them to put out another Elder Scrolls. And then again, we don't know if it'll be any good. Fallout 4, ring a bell. Fallout 76, the game's so bad I puked while playing it. <laughs> Sony, on the other hand, like for real, here's the games off the top of my head Sony I know has coming. They've already confirmed there's going to be another Ghost of Tsushima. That's a no-brainer for me. God of War Ragnarok. Hello? I mean, really? The next Spider-Man game. I hate to say it, but the kids are right. It's probably going to be lit. <laughs> They're going to do Wolverine. And it's going to be rated mature. It's from the same people who did Spider-Man. Gran Turismo 7. What else is coming? I can't even think of anything. Oh, the game with the chick who looks like Nick Avocado. Forspoken. Was it? No. No, Aloy's in it. God, what the hell's that game called? Horizon Zero Dawn Out West or something like that. The Forbidden West. People are losing their minds in this. She's like, oh, Sony's screwed. Oh, yeah, they also got Knights Zero Republic. But then again, it's a remake. I would question her credentials, too. All right, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw two out there. Both of them are probably more wishful thinking than actuality. But since there is going to be a Fable Four sometime down the line, yeah, uh, uh, remasters of Fable One, Two, and Three, that I makes think sense. that would do very very well for them. As well as uh, I still think there's a chance that they're going to be buying more studios and we're going to have ourselves a Metal Gear game on a Microsoft. Oh, that would be Ooh. such a big yeah. fu. Adam Sessler speculating that Microsoft is what, going to buy Konami? Do you think Microsoft's going to buy Konami? Or I shouldn't even be speculating like this because it's derailing from the video. We'll save that for some other time. Yeah, yeah oh. I, I just, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just a feel. Again, dead Nothing man walking. Nothing but a feeling. Uh, is Bioware, <laughs> does, have Xbox eaten up Bioware yet? No. Yeah, no. just EA. Okay, how does this chick, one, not know that Bioware is owned by EA? How do you not know that? Has Xbox bought up Bioware? No, you fidget spinner. This is why everybody got bad at her. They're like, why do you have someone here that doesn't know basic stuff? Sorry, I just had hibachi. It makes my throat all weird. So, okay, I can see the issues there. And she's like, dead man walking, repeating it again. Microsoft didn't buy Konami or the Metal Gear IP. And even if they did, if they can't secure Ko Kojiyama, nobody's really going to want to screw with it. And God help you, Kojiyama feels like he wants to do something weird again because, frankly, the story of MGS5 was off the rails stupid. And I've lived my entire childhood. I used to smoke the Kojiyama ganja. <laughs> you know? No, no, they yeah, had the yeah. option to with the first Mass Effect, but they gave it over to EA. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people don't remember. That was, the original one wasn't exclusive. It was exclusive. I don't know. I just, I feel like there's so many titles, and if there's... I don't think that Sony has enough good exclusives right now, comparatively, probably to what Game Pass and uh, Xbox exclusives will offer me. That between like the Hogwarts Legacy game, between the fact that we could have two incredible RPG series. Okay, I see here she's got Hogwarts Legacy wrong. That's not an Xbox exclusive. What is she talking about? I don't even pay attention to console games, and I somehow know more than the person who was hired by G4. Jesus Christ. I see why everybody got all angry. Well, if I was a console gamer and I was invested in this, I can understand why they got upset because some of these people, you know, they live for this garbage. And I don't give half a rat's ass. I'm like, God damn. I'd hate for her to be a GPS. She'd drive me into a lake. 
in uh, 2022 or even 2023 with Starfield and anything that Obsidian's putting out, if it's avowed um, of potential Elder Scrolls. Like, there is a world where I'm playing four RPG amazing games at one time. I am ready for that world and nothing is on PlayStation. That makes me sad. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you now get to wear the target. I am thankful so much. Jer it shows you how emasculated these dudes are. Nobody corrects her once and she was wrong multiple times. The most they did was go, well, Mass Effect was an Xbox exclusive. That didn't mean Xbox could buy Mass Effect. Mass Effect was an EA exclusive. They just had the exclusive to the Xbox. The same like they did with the Halo. F no, they always Halo was on PC first. And then it became an Xbox exclusive. We're not doing a history lesson. I ain't got time for all this. So there you go. That's what spurred people in chat Pretty much being like, yeah, this chick doesn't know what she's talking about. Why is she here? Miss Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn, yada yada. She spun into sexism. Here we are. That covers all the bases. You now know what actually went down, what's going on, and how it was spun. It's basically politics 101. The girl did the right move in the way of getting people off of her back there and putting the focus someplace else. Now she's going to be already on Twitter. People are acting like she's a hero and she's doing something. There's tons of articles about her calling out misogyny. And I can't expect journalism to be any good. It's gaming journalism. It's pathetic. Gaming journalism sites literally go on Instagram and they see someone do a cosplay. And if it has 2,000 likes, they do an article on it because they're just so goddamn devoid of creativity. So there you go. Merry Christmas. Oh, Christmas is over. Happy New Year. It sucks. <laughs> Newsflash.